Welcome to Manny's TV Talk, where we will talk about all of our favorite reality TV shows and news surrounding them. Grab a snack, a drink, and get comfortable because this starts now. She's been nothing but ugh, toxic. I look at her and I'm like... Olivia finally cracked. Can we just chat? Oh my god. Hello everybody and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about the new episode of Bachelor in Paradise. That's season 9 episode 7. And listen, I I don't know why, but I feel like these people must be on something because this is not normal behavior. But let's get started. So we pick up with this disastrous night. Charity just stormed in. Eliza had heard some rumors earlier that day about Aaron. So Eliza wants to know straight from the source, what does Charity know? So Charity tells Eliza that after her season, a girl reached out to her and said that she was dating Aaron and that he broke up with her for the sole purpose of going on the show to make it sound like Aaron was clout chasing or was being fake or disingenuous. But thankfully for Aaron, Charity says that she really didn't believe the girl. I mean, she only has her words, but with Aaron, she actually got to know him. She knows his actions, and he came across very genuine in her season, so that's why he made it so far. So she tells Eliza, just go with the flow, you decide how it'll go, and just give him a chance. So that was good. Then after that, Charity grabs Aaron and they both go talk. It was a little bit awkward at first because, you know, they are each other exes. But they talk about the rumors. This ex-girlfriend, apparently he says that he hasn't even talked to her since he broke up with her. So he's denying anything that she's saying. Charity then gives him some tips for him to keep Eliza interested in him. And hopefully that they can work out. She says, commit to her. Like, honestly. So I feel like they made us worry for nothing. Aaron, they made it seem like he was going to be destroyed. But it was good. And in a way, if you think about it, he was almost sort of even vindicated by Charity coming on here and saying that. So to finalize this storyline, Eliza grabs, um, Aaron grabs Eliza, I'm sorry, and they go talk and all eyes are on them. But he tells her that everything he has told her, everything he has done has been genuine from the heart. He will hold himself accountable every day to commit to her she says that you know she was feeling nervous to be honest she had some doubts but if they want to do this she wants them to be able to communicate and talk about everything so she'll believe him but she wants full transparency always Aaron is so happy because it's a huge weight lifted off his shoulders and hopefully this will continue to go well with them too and I think it's normal for Eliza to feel these things so time will you know help them so now that that is done Let's focus on Kat. Oh my lord. So she decided to focus her attention on John Henry. Now that she that Tanner dumped her and she has no one. But that's Olivia's man. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Because she... Kat is real, literally the most desperate and thirsty woman on this beach. She might as well go drink the whole ocean. That's how thirsty she is. So she's talking to John Henry and he says, well, why, what didn't you like about Tanner? And now she want to talk about, oh, well, I feel like he wasn't right for me. I was like, girl, bye. But the annoying part is that this fool is falling for it. He takes her to the ocean and they're playing around talking. And I was just like, John Henry, what are you doing? Not only that, you guys. They did it right in front of where Olivia and all these other people were sitting. Like, they could have gone anywhere in the ocean, but they had to just stand right there. Kat is being fake, pretending to like what he's talking about. And at this point, Tanner is observing this, and he is happy he dodged that bullet. Okay, then, it is a new day in paradise. So that was that for that night. We opened up in a new day. And they got an entire day before the rose ceremony. Aaron is really trying. He brought Eliza her favorite breakfast and even wrote her a super sweet letter with it. As far as John Henry, he he's still trying to figure out what to do. But we really didn't see what happened that day because then they skip right through to the cocktail party. So it's t uh, nighttime by now. Jesse walks in and gives an update about the old Sam. She's okay now. Whatever. So, it was a pretty interesting week, you know, with Becca coming, Genevieve, and the new Sam. Things did change. Jesse is messy. He asks Olivia, what is she thinking, in front of everyone. And even though Kat sat right next to John Henry, Olivia says in front of everyone that she is lock and loaded for her interest for John Henry. Like, it's just him who she's interested in. But three women will be going home. But they have time. So they begin the cocktail party. 
Also, can we please kick out Kylie and Avon from this show? Come on, I'm so over them. Aaron, once again, is having a conversation with Eliza. I get what he's doing, but I hope that he doesn't do it too much to the point where she feels like he's being too clingy. Um, Jess has no idea what's going to happen to her. So she goes and talks to Blake to see what's going on. Where are they at? And she you know, she says, you know, I missed you. She says that she misses how he talks to her. She misses the way he looks at her. He misses the way he touches her. I mean, wow, that was the most I've ever seen her speak like that. But Blake likes what he's hearing. And he wants to press the green light on them. So he tells her, now I'm confused. Because last week, Jess and Tyler shared one of the most passionate kisses I've ever seen. And now she's back with Blake. And Blake had a great time with Genevieve. But now Genevieve is disappointed because she sees that he is back with Jess. And it sucks because it really went well on that day. Genevieve is confused. Tanner is over the moon. So he starts talking. Of course, we know that he had a thing with Davia. He starts talking to Genevieve. And they kiss. I was just like, what the hell? Where did this kiss come from? Rachel also speaks to Tanner. And they kiss as well. I mean, damn, he was a hot commodity that night. He must think that he was the damn bachelor. I think that maybe what he was thinking was, all these girls need my row, so I might as well make out with as many girls as I can. But without a doubt, the biggest triangle going on is Olivia, John Henry, and Kat. Olivia actually talks to John Henry and says, straight up, I don't like Kat. But now he says that Kat has caught his attention. And I'm just like, damn, how can someone be so dumb? He says that he doesn't want to judge her based on her relationship with Brayden or her relationship with Tanner. And I'm just there like, has this dude ever heard of red flags? But Olivia isn't too overbearing. She understands that she needs to give him space to figure it out. Then Wells goes ahead and reads some of the Paradise Truth box that they have been doing, like the little anonymous notes. There is one note in there that says, John Henry, meet me in the hot tub. He goes to the hot tub and of course, Kat is there. This girl is determined. And he says that Kat definitely did it to him and that he can see him and herself dating. And she's there with her Jezebel spirit seducing him. I wanted to slap some sense into him, but they start making out. And he says, I've been waiting for this for three days. So he's thinking with the wrong head. I'll tell you all that much. The girls who heard what the truth box note said then went to go tell Olivia because Olivia wasn't there when it was read out loud. So they tell that what they tell Olivia what Kat planned on the hot tub. And Olivia is mad. But not just because Kat is stealing her man, but because if tomorrow a new guy came, Kat would definitely go after him. So after Kat comes from her little bathtub date, Olivia has finally cracked. So she goes up to her and confronts her. Olivia says to Kat that she has felt disrespected. She's not saying that Kat can't go on a date with him. I mean, that's why they're there. But Kat is not a girl's girl. Like, she did, does not honor anyone else, like, to even have the courtesy to tell them, listen, I know that you had a relationship with him, but I'm also going to pursue it. And she doesn't think that Kat is being genuine. She wants her to be genuine with John Henry. So Kat begins to say that she didn't feel the need to tell nothing to Olivia because they were not friends and that Olivia herself hasn't been a girl's girl. So Olivia says, please tell me <laughs> an example of when I haven't been a girl's girl. But Kat starts coming with some BS so Olivia says you know what talk to the hand you're not genuine and she leaves this all rests on John Henry's hand it is time for the rose ceremony eight guys 11 girls three girls will be home going home Jesse comes but no one had realized that Becca was missing not even Brayden isn't that your girl man how did you not realize she wasn't there so Jesse goes to try and find her and she's standing in some corner by herself looking like an idiot and Jesse says, what are you doing here? And she says, I'm having doubts. So he says, I'm sorry to hear that, but are you coming or not? Because if not, you can leave. <laughs> he was not having it with her. But this chick decides to leave, which is weird. So Jesse goes back and tells him that she left. But I'm just really curious about this case. Was this production? Because I'm thinking, why, would, why wouldn't why would Brayden go look for her, first of all? And if her and Brayden had such a good connection, why would she feel doubt? I mean, Brayden definitely looks shocked, but I just think there's so much that 
we didn't see. But at least for the other women that are there, that only means that two of them are going to be leaving. So that is a little bit better for some of them. So they begin. Avon gives his rose to Kylie. Blah. Tyler to Mercedes. I guess they're going to pretend as if him and Jess didn't make out. Peter gives his rose to Sam. Aaron to Eliza. Blake to Jess. Tanner. His goes to Rachel. What the hell? Wait a damn minute, I thought when I was watching this. What? When he said Rachel, I was just like, hmm, what is really going on? Okay, but then we go with John Henry. Unfortunately, his rose goes to Kat. Because he quote-unquote can see himself out of there with her. John Henry, you deserve everything that's coming for you, my brother. That's all I'm going to tell you. Brayden... Since his boo left, he really has no meaning, no one that's meaningful enough for him to give a rose to. He just says, you know what, I'm just going to give my rose to the person that deserves it. And he gives it to Olivia. Hell yeah. Now, they're not in love or anything, but he needed to give a rose out. So he gave it to her. But I was just like, hell yeah, because that means that she's going to stay another week. And Kat was literally fuming, seeing that she was going to stay. Unfortunately, Davia and Genevieve leave. They were great women. I do think they were genuinely good chicks. Unfortunately, they just didn't make it. I do think the Davia thing with Tanner was just so weird. I, I felt blindsided. So then, it's the next morning. The vibes seem good. Everybody is coupled up with whoever they got in the rose ceremony with. Kat is being a mean girl, going around telling people, Why the F would Brayden give her his rose to Olivia? And Olivia, you know, she actually did have feelings for John Henry. So right now she's feeling a little bit uneasy because she feels like she's there by default. She really has no genuine connection with anyone else. And she really liked John Henry. And just because he picked Kat doesn't mean those feelings are going to go away. And I think that if Olivia feels like, had he at least picked a good girl, maybe it would hurt a little bit less. But Kat is also telling people that Olivia put her hand in her face, which is true, but the way she was saying it just sounded very, <laughs> very suspicious. Then John Henry has the nerve to go talk to Olivia. And he says that he felt bad, he apologizes, but it just sounded like he was trying to clear his conscience. She doesn't really know what to say, she's hurt. She just tells him that, you know, he's a stand up guy, he's a great man. But Kat is bipolar and narcissistic. <laughs> That's essentially what she said. But he tries to explain and say that he has had a good time with Kat. You, um, I felt so bad for Olivia having to hear him talk about how great Kat is. It was pretty sad, actually. As far as Olivia, I'm, I'm going to say it's impressive that she has gotten this far despite her unfortunate events. Then a new man comes down, Michael from Charity Season. I do slightly remember him. I think he just looks a little bit different. He came with a date card and he pulls Olivia and she's happy about that. He's a really cool dude. He even takes his sandals off for her because she didn't have any and the sand was really hot. So they had a great conversation and she was thinking, yes, finally I have someone that I can talk to. And she's really happy. But then he also grabs Kylie. He grabs Sam, he grabs Mercedes, and after talking to them, he decides to take, we will find out next week, some other, some new guys will come down next week, but then, oh my gosh, Katie Thurston is back, who we might as well call Katie Thirsty, because she might be just as thirsty as Kat, not, maybe a little bit more, but she's going to mess things up with Blake. So, wow, 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 I can't wait for next week. This week was a little bit boring. Uh, I feel like the only thing that we really focused on was Kat and uh, Olivia being in a triangle with um, John Henry. I'm happy that Charity cleared things up and Aaron is back on track with Eliza. But as far as this episode, you guys, what did y'all think? What did y'all think about what John Henry did? Did it surprise you? And did it surprise you what Tanner did with by grabbing Rachel instead of Davia as much as, as much as it surprised me? Let me know in the comments, you guys. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll catch y'all next time. Have a great one.